Hi guys, welcome to my art studio. For today's video, I am going to paint a cow. So I thought that I would paint this relatively simple painting and share my process with you guys. I've had a lot of requests and I really appreciate it. I appreciate the interest in my art. I also sell my art and very soon, I probably will be putting up an Instagram page specifically for my art and my name is Art by Paniyota, so I will be doing that very soon in the future. If you guys want to follow along and watch my process, stick around. we're going to do as always is tone the canvas and I like my canvas to be a mid-tone that way you can judge colors better so this is just a 9 by 12 canvas and I have a glass palette and on my palette I have ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and I will mix them with Gamsol it's kind of a um, it's a solvent or terps if you will so I will mix them together and just make a nice runny mixture and that is what I tone the canvas with. It's a nice, I call it a nice warm up exercise. It's kind of like stretching before you actually do your workout. Once I get the background covered, I like to go over my canvas like this to add a bit of texture and also to get the paint kind of worked into the weave of the canvas and just smooth it just a bit. So I decided the canvas was too dark. So now I'm adding some yellow ochre mixed with sienna to just brighten up the canvas just a bit. So that's the beauty of oil paint. You can always wipe it off and start over. So in art, there is no right or wrong. You need to learn all the rules so you can break them. And I'm a rule breaker. <laughs> I'm a rule breaker from way back. It's going to be a cow out in a pasture with a nice sky and I had it a bit dark. So add and take away all the time, all the time. So if you don't like something, you just start over. So now I think this would work better. It has a bit of a glow and I think it will make for a better underpainting. This is the little cutie that we're going to be painting, a Holstein cow. So I'm just going to put my reference photo up here. I'm going to tape it up here. I have my reference. I have my toned canvas. And I'm ready to go. You guys, I still haven't quite figured out <laughs> how I need to do this. I'll, I'll figure it out. Now I'm going to begin with my painting. Okay, I'm going to begin with my drawing. And the first thing I want to do is just get a basic outline and place him on the canvas. I like to draw on the canvas with paint because you can take it away so easily. If you make a mistake, you can just wipe it off with a paper towel. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna look at the shape of the cow and I'm pretty much gonna do this sight size about the same size as this. I might make it just a little bigger. So I'm gonna start right here. So here is the top of the cow, his hip, and I'm just going to begin to Follow along and try to imitate the lines the best that I can. This neck. So I'm going to begin to measure and bring it down here. Now, the bottom of his stomach. It's very easy to measure this way. You close one eye and you hold it up to your reference photo, you take the top of the brush, and you can move your thumb up and down like this, and then you bring it down here, and bam. His rear, maybe got back. <laughs> and I like to do the legs by maybe thinking about negative shapes. So that's the beauty of painting this way and drawing actually drawing with paint. I really, I really enjoy doing it this way. So I'm, I'm actually not looking at the legs, I'm looking at the negative, the negative shapes. There's a shape right here that's kind of a V, upside down V, and then this. So I want to, 
I want to make that same shape that I see here. You have to like to be alone, really, I think, to be an artist and to enjoy the process. There are so many times that I would just mess up royally, royal, royally, if I can say that. But I'm always measuring when I'm drawing. I'm always going back and forth and checking my proportions. Looks like his tail is just kind of back here. Okay, so now I need to figure out where the horizon is right here, where the trees start and the grass ends. And it looks to be right about here. So we're gonna just do a little line as an indication all the way across. And this is where the trees will be. So just kind of fill in a dark mass. This is our underpainting. Just kind of get it filled in to indicate the trees in the far off distance. All right, so I have the indication of the trees in the background, the horizon, and the cow. And the next thing that I need to do is put in some shadows to anchor this little cow down to the ground. So let's go ahead and put in the shadow shapes, okay? So just put in that shape for the shadow. And it will anchor him right down to the ground. Okay, look at that mess. That is truly how an artist works. All right, so here's what we have so far. We have the reference photo and we have the underpainting. All right, let's just loosely kind of fill in some of these dark areas. Okay, so I went ahead and I filled in the spots. Now, I didn't fill them in exactly the way my reference photo is. I just kind of did it similar. But if I were doing a commission and someone wanted me to paint this cow, I would take a lot of pains to make it look exactly like this. But since we're just doing this for fun, I just went ahead and just filled in the spots, you know, pretty close. Okay, so now I think that we are ready to start on the background. All right, so for the sky, we're using a very limited palette on this painting. Again, we're going with the ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue, and it's Gamblin. That's one of my favorite paints, along with Windsor and Newton. If you are going to paint, you need quality paint. So I'm going with ultramarine blue. I'm going to dip it in my Neoma Gilp just to help it spread a little easier and maybe add a little white to lighten up the blue. Okay? Now on the corners, you always want the corners a little bit darker. So I will start in the corners, darker on the top. We don't have a lot of sky going on here. We'll just go across the top with a little bit of darker paint. Just nice, loose brush strokes. Just go with it. It's so relaxed, so fun. And as you get down closer to the trees, your sky will become lighter. I could show you exactly what I mean, but you want that domed effect on the painting when you're painting a sky. Going back over it again, it needs to be a little thicker. I like my brush strokes to show. All right, so now I'm going to dip a little bit into the white as I come down and the value will become lighter as I go across. See that? Up and down, just kind of work your brush. Up and down. Let's add some more white. Here's a nice big dip here and you'll want it lighter where you'll get that effect. Down to the trees. We can add more white after we get all of the sky in to make sure that we're happy with the look of the sky. Something like that. 
And this isn't really a paint along, but if you guys are interested in painting, you know, let me know if you're interested. I can give you a list of beginning supplies. And those of you that are interested, we can do a paint along. We can do that. I've thought about starting a painting channel, you guys, but I don't know. It would be a lot. <laughs> Okay, so there's the sky. As you see, the top part is darker and you work your way lighter as you go down toward the trees and it gives it more of a dome effect. And it also looks like wispy clouds and you can see those beautiful brush marks. I'm gonna start to work on the trees. I like sap green and a lot of times I'll mix in some yellow or ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow to make a beautiful green. I start out with sap green. I'm gonna use a, quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and put the cadmium yellow, and the cadmium colors is what gives you your glow. Any cadmium, cadmium red, cadmium orange, any of the cadmium colors is where you get your glow. I need kind of a rough brush with some like rough bristles. So I think I'll start out with this one to do the tops and I may get a bigger brush. Tops of the trees will be a little lighter and that's where I'll use the cadmium because the sun has kissed the top of the trees. You always have to think logically. Who would have ever thought that I would think logically? But I'm just gonna go ahead and make a little indication of the tops of the trees and then uh, we start with the darks. You have to have the darks to see the lights. And I'm just dabbing. Nothing, no big deal. You see, I'm just dabbing away. I'm going to get the basic shape of the tree in here, and this really, you know, this bristle brush, it's stiff, so it, it, it's good. It's good for this type of work. I wonder if there are any bears up there, mountain lions. <laughs> One thing about painting, you get in a world all your own, and I really do talk to myself. I talk to the painting, I talk to the little cow. Yes, you have to be a little eccentric to paint, just a little. All right, work our way across. See how pretty and realistic, because Nothing in nature is perfect. It's all just, you know, it's just growing wild. I used to, in the beginning, try to be too perfect. Like that right there, I probably would have smoothed that out, but I kind of like it. Sometimes these little accidents happen and you're like, hey, that's pretty cool, I'm gonna leave it. You have to learn to leave it. And in the beginning, I used to smooth everything out. You don't want to do that. You want texture to your art or to your paintings. You want variety. I'm going to add a tiny bit of cad yellow, just a tiny bit, here. Because you don't want it all to be one color. Always think about directional brush strokes. Directional brush strokes, here they are more flat. So it gives the land a bit of movement. I would give up every last handbag, every pair of shoes, everything I have and keep my art because it fulfills my soul. It is something that makes me so happy. Now here at the bottom, I notice it's darker. So I'm gonna add some more ultramarine blue in with the sap green. I'm just gonna make a separate pile to make a darker, just dab it on, any which way, this way and that way, just dab it on. As long as we keep that horizon, you know, intact. It's really dark right here in my reference photo right here. I mixed in some ultramarine blue here to give it a darker look. And then I let some of the underpainting, some of the umber show through to give it dimension. 
and a little dab of cadmium yellow, like the sun is kissing the tree. So you have the dome look at the sky, nothing even. I just dabbed it on. I left another dark spot here closer to the ground. Okay, so we will start. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start on the cow. So I'm using Midnight Black. I'm going to fill in these and I'll be back because I don't want this um, video to be like two hours long. So I'm just dipping into the Midnight Black and I'm just kind of rolling my brush around like this, kind of going over my underpainting where the spots are. I want them to be thick. So just little irregular spots. Okay. I like to take my brush and just roll it and twist it around so you get all these different textures. You just don't want to be too precise. Okay, so I've started on the grass and the back of it is lighter where the sun is hitting near the horizon line. And I have a mixture of cadmium yellow and sap green. Oh my gosh, my husband. <laughs> it's that basement renovation again. Anyway, and so I just let dark and lights, and I just use directional brush strokes like that. Now, if I wanted it to look like the land was hilly, I would use directional brush strokes going like this, but the cow is just out here in a nice pasture. So I'm just kind of getting around the cow. What should we name him? You guys give me some suggestions. Do you have a cute name for him? Put it in the comments below. Yeah, we'll put a little more sunlight there. And his tail is about right there. So we'll just kind of go around the back of this, this negative space here. And as we get up closer, the grass will begin to look darker. Everything far away is always a lighter value, or not so much light value, but I would say cooler. And then as you get up close, things get darker. You see more detail and all that jazz. Okay, so, so I'm just kind of carving I guess, if you will, around his neck and jaw. Just be loosey-goosey when you're painting. It's just paint. You just, just paint over it. If you don't like what you've painted, just start over. I'm going to uh, paint the shadow darker, and it will have a lot of, um, I think I might go with the Prussian blue because it is darker. I'll probably touch up a few areas, but I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. And it looks like the sun is shining back here and it gets darker in the forefront. So we have the three values. I feel like I can darken it just a little in the grass to have it a, to have a three-dimensional look. So I've been working on the grass and what I'm doing is just taking my paintbrush and adding just by dipping it in a little bit of paint, in the darker paint, I am just kind of going on the side and just twisting it around and just kind of doing like that because I don't want it to look perfect and you do see more detail up front. So I don't have to worry about it back there because that's in the distance but I'm just adding texture. I'm twisting and pulling and just letting the paintbrush do it. So see, you can see that there's a little bit of texture look right here in the foreground. Okay? And that's just something you can just keep playing with it all day if you want to. Yeah, stop. So, <laughs> all 
All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is fill in the white areas of the cow and then do his belly. And it's really just kind of like color by numbers, really, just go around the dark places. So I'll hold it up and let you see. So I will go ahead and paint that and come back and show you what he looks like. And then we'll do kind of a peachy color under his belly. And that'll be a wrap. Just a quick little cow painting. And here you go, just a quick little cow painting. Here's the reference photo. I changed mine just a little. I usually do if I'm working from a reference photo. So it's just a little cow painting. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.